Bam, so I got it off. So basically all I had to do is use a little blade and cut it so it was wrapped around this one. Um, let me show you what the coating looks like. That's all it is. It's like a frail plastic. Oh. So next I want to show you guys this. So that is what was originally connected to the block. That is the new original. New. All right. So let's see if I can put you guys down here. And there's the new cord. So I have it following right here, tracking up here, next to there, and into the box. All right. Uh, next one I have. It is, I got two more. Which I check out the uh, positive, so it's going to be positive terminal to uh, the starter. And then I have one more negative to do, and I'm going to do that next negative. All right, guys, so I got two more. So, again, uh, this is the only positive wire, so that's going to go to the battery terminal. And that is going to go to the positive side of your starter. That's the one I'm going to do last. So here's another ground one. It's a little different because the, um, uh, I guess it's like a fiberglass coating, uh, sleeve should I say, not really a coating, isn't attached. Um, and I thought maybe it was a mistake, but it looks like it's there. So that cord is gonna be the only wire that's on the left side of your engine. Um, and it's on the back firewall, actually. So it's this one right here. So it's basically at the end of your block. You just look straight up and it's connected right there. And you can see, look at that. Even this one is exposing bare wire. And then it's connected to right there. So it just goes right to that one right there. So I'll set you guys up and we'll take that one off. All right, I got you guys all set up and it looks like they're both gonna be uh, size 12. Um, so I don't know about uh, regular 80 series if this is a stock thing or not. Um, I think this was part of my aftermarket alarm that I took off but I didn't take off this part. So as you can see, that kind of blocks this. So for that, I'm going to use uh, an adjustable uh, size type ratchet just to make it a little easier on me. And that's not going to work, so get my handy dandy little stool because I'm short. So as you can see, the problem is there's not much room in here. That's really what it is. So let's see. This is an interesting setup for sure. Okay, 
Alright, it's not going to work. Kodiak! Try to make this a little easier on myself, and I'm going to get this one off first. Oh, wow, that's under tight. Holy crap. And again, I was kind of stupid, and I should have. Probably have blasted all these with PG Blaster and let it sit for a day or night. And there's that bolt. I'm going to clean that up later, just before I put it back on. Wow, look at that. So that is what the old one looks like. dog up real quick so I'll be right back all right I'm back I also got some gloves on now so I think I'm gonna try to take this thing off I'm not sure if it actually comes off though Okay, let's see what this does if I try to undo it. It looks like that bolt might be welded though. Oh, no. Okay. So for me, I'm just going to take this off. Again, I don't know if this is on every 80 series though. So there's what mine was. Again, I don't know if that's stock or not. But now, that's awesome, because now it leaves me a nice amount of room to take this off. see what this one looks like this one's not too bad but same thing I'm gonna let it soak in some uh, warm uh, water with some dish soap just to free up and then I'm gonna scrub them both with a wire brush and I think that will really help with the contact too uh, and then I usually do the same thing on this side is I don't do the same thing but 
What I do on this side is I'll spray it with a little alcohol and I will wipe it down of any grime. And then what I like to do is I spray some kind of lubricant inside, uh, whether it be PB Blast or a WD-40 type. And I also do it on the threads of the uh, screws. So let's give this real quick look because like, to me that's the most important thing that you guys can see the difference in the actual wires so this is a uh pretty sure this is a six gauge it looks like and this is probably like a 12. so this is going to be twice as uh big of wires and look at this one though so like you put the sleeve and again i don't know if this is stock i'm pretty sure it probably is though but look at that it's just wire this one, you know, you pull it back, and it's like that throughout the whole thing on both sides. I mean, so it was working, but how well, who knows, right? Okay, so I'm going to clean up these bolts, um, and then I'll bring you back for that last wire. All right, so I got those nice and cleaned up. There's the wall one, and here... Is the one for the block. So now you can actually see their color. So that sets you guys up. So as you can see, I already put that one up. Uh, now it's just an easy task of putting up the other one. Okay. And Today I'm going to be using this. It's for RV slide out lube. Um, it's basically the same as WD-40. Um, my PB blaster is in the back of my truck in the parking lot, so I don't feel like walking all the way over there. And this is going to work too. Like I said, I just like to get a nice lubricant on these. Um, it also helps with anti-corrosion. Um, and what the slide out is lube, it's for the metal uh, part of my retracting frame of my slide so it works really well for this too so that I just hand tightened as of right now and then this I'm gonna do the same thing just hand tighten it for right now Engineer this bracket there as well. I mean, that works, but I'm not in love with how it lays. All right, let's tighten this one first. Thank you. 
Now, when you retighten these, of course, you want these snug because, like, that's the whole point. But what I do is, as I'm tightening it, I adjust the cord just so that way the metal bracket on it, right, the lug is what they call it at the end of the wire, has the best, uh, what I believe is the best contact position. Like that's a good one. This one is easy. And what I did for this one up here is I took the bracket off. Uh, I felt like this bracket wasn't really needed now that I didn't have this little hudicky thing. I don't even know what it is. But I tried putting it back on with the bracket and I felt like it just wasn't getting a great connection because basically the connection would be on here and then this touches, this bracket touches the metal, which I feel like it's much better if it just touches the metal itself. Um, and I guess I could have tried sliding it behind this bracket, but this bracket had no no purpose really besides screwing this in. So all right. And the final one. Like I said, only positive one. So it's gonna be this positive lead right here. And it's going to go all the way back to your starter, which is right there. It's kind of hard to see with the light, but that is your starter right there. So let me set up the camera and get some good. So the first thing I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to unhook it from the positive cable on this side. Oh. I think that one is a 12, if I remember right. Mm. Yeah, I guess a 12. Might be a little smaller. And I'm just going to undo this side too, might as well. This way I can clean up the terminal later. Ooh, okay, that got caught. So that way it's just not new wires. You kind of clean the grime and rust or anything else off of all your terminals. Bam. So that's off. And actually, I'm looking at replacing these soon uh, with some better quality military-grade ones. And I am in the military, so sometimes when people say military-grade, it's uh, bullshit. Because uh, sometimes, a lot of times, our military-grade stuff in the military is not that good. Okay, so it seems super complicated, this cord going down, because it's in like a, there's a plastic sleeve over it. Uh, it's called loom is what they call it. And it's just to protect the wire from heat. But what's good is that's the only wire that's in there. So it's a big loom, but it's just this wire. So now all I have to do is disconnect it from the starter down there, which I also think is, I think that's 12 too. Um, and then from there, I can just pull out the wire. Now there's a hack to this that I'm not going to do and it's taking off this front tire because you take off that front uh, driver's tire right here, you have complete access to the starter. Um, I don't want to do that because it takes a little longer and I can just reach my hand back there and simply unscrew it. I did it before, so that's how I'm going to do it. So um, I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I want to try to show you guys what I mean. So that, my friends, is your starter right there. And I think I can get an angle. You might be able to see it. So see the wrench. Let's see if I can get it to you. 
the wrench right there is on top of the thing. So see, I literally, let's see if I can get you in there. Maybe you can see it a little better. There we go. So see, your starter, I just put the wrench up and under that uh, tube, and then it goes right on top right there. So that's the wire. It's a 12 gauge bolt, and then that's the power wire towards your starter. Um, I mean, not, that's the power, the one we're uh, disconnecting right now. So pretty easy. Like I said, some people take the whole tire off, so that way you have better access to the starter. I just simply slip in and under there. So let me get that bolt the rest of the way out, and we'll continue. All right, we're back. So this is the 12 millimeter bolt that's on there. And this one's already pretty clean, um, just because, like I said, I uh, took it off already before because I was uh, testing my starter, making sure it wasn't bad when I was chasing down some uh, gremlins. So all you do is, like I said, I'm just going to pull on it. And it's all going to come out. Now, like I said, let's put it on the ground. This one is actually not a bad wire. It's pretty thick. And then this is the loom I was talking about. Right, just plastic casing. And it looks like they wrap some, uh, like a styrofoam. And then they plastic cased it here as well. But you can see how it's pretty corroded. Right, I mean, these are original. And then, here's my new one, which I'm not sure if this was bigger. This is a two gauge, the new one. This is, I don't think this is a two gauge. This is probably more around a four gauge. Um, I wish I said, but yeah, I'm thinking it's a four gauge. And I'm really interested on this plastic casing. So I'm gonna play with that for a few seconds and I'll bring us back for the install. All right, so I just cinched that one down and now I have it on here. So that was the final uh, cord. So now it's all about where you wanna route it. I'm basically routing it in what I would consider the fairly the same direction that the other one uh, was routed in. And that is really it. From here, it's just kind of reconnecting some of these cords. So let me reconnect those real quick. Boom. Boom. And then from here, I just got to reinstall the battery. So I'll do that. No reason to have you guys watch. And then I'll go over the very end. Okay, guys, last part. So I got the battery back in, you know, trying to clean up these wires. So for me personally, I don't like this battery. It's a little awkward um, and bulky um, compared to some at the same voltage. But... I was able to kind of squeeze that wire up and around and on there like that. Uh, I got this one here, as you can see, it's routed down there to the starter. I just wrapped it up through here, boom, boom, boom. And you can see that, right? Yeah. And then to here, uh, junction box looks a little crazy. I ordered a new one. So how we got fried not too long ago. It looks like the fusible link is still good. It looks like it came from this side. Um, and I don't know if it's because of that. That was already kind of cracking like that, which uh, 
probably is a good idea for me to upgrade these two wires um, as well eventually. They don't sell a kit for that that I've seen, so I'll probably have to hand do something, which is okay. Um, I'm pretty confident at doing little things like this because I did my whole solar wiring uh, by hand, so I could probably do that too. But, boom. Put them on both posts. Uh, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of room. What I really would eventually like to do is install some kind of bus bar or something. So these connectors connect out here, one positive and one negative. And then from there on this side, I would have one negative line going to the battery terminal and one going to this. So all of these wires that are connected here would actually be connected out here. I think that would make it a lot more easier for this not to have to go through all this um, and yada, yada, yada. But for right now, it looks pretty good. Um, for the future, I might look at maybe um, putting some rubber or plastic loom in certain places. Not because I'm afraid these wires are melting, but I can already see down here how it's against that metal. And with movement, that's going to eventually rub all of this off and it could rub through. I mean, that would take years and years, but you know, if I just put a little piece of uh, plastic loom, which I have more, um, I think, in my solar uh, stuff, or maybe reuse something like this, like wash it up and just wrap it and with a little bit of uh, electrical tape. And that way when it rubs, it's going to be rubbing against something like this versus this. Uh, like I said, I foresee this lasting a long time, but uh, I like to take extra precautions. So that's it. Let me know what you think. Um, I will uh, more than likely link below the um, upgraded uh, batter kit. Uh, I forgot the company's name, um, but I said it in the beginning of the video. And overall, pretty happy with the kit. Uh, the hardest part, I think, to me was just kind of figuring out where to wire it and taking apart some of that loom to get some of these wires out. Um, the other thing you want to make sure is that you have connectors that are built for bigger gauges. I already did, but just to make sure you do. Let me know what you think. Uh, thumbs up, and see you guys later.